Good morning. Good morning. We've got a couple of seats over here if anyone wants to kind of squeeze in a little bit, but you're welcome to, uh, you're welcome to stand around as needed. We, I can't think of a more beautiful day to be on the campus of Moorhead State University. The trees are blooming, the grass is starting to come out, and we have so many events uh, between now and commencement that it's just about hard to keep up with them. End of the year honors banquets for students, employees, retirement banquets, a whole host of things. So hopefully you'll get the opportunity to take advantage of some of those. Good morning, my name is Jay Morgan. I have the pleasure of serving as president of the institution. We have a number of board members here today. I won't call them out by name, but they're, I've seen a couple of them circulating. Thank you for being here and uh, supporting this. Would you give a round of applause for our athletic staff and the work that they do? I, I saw Scott Napier here earlier. I don't know where he went. If you got your blue uh, spray paint, Scott, where'd you go? <laughs> but, new, MSU shoes. new MSU shoes. Can you get them at Walmart? Uh, we'll make them now. Okay, all right. <laughs> For those of you that uh, Scott kind of spearheaded, uh, I, I guess our blue crew a little bit at some of the tournaments. So thank you, Scott. And thank you to all of our supporters for athletics who bring the uniqueness that you bring, whether it's blue hair paint or shoes or financial support or volunteerism or, or other ways. I, I saw Drew here in the audience. Does this mean he's decommitting from Iowa? <laughs> Drew, where are you? <laughs> I, I, we do have a number of uh, athletes here, both in basketball and otherwise, and while we kind of kid them a little bit, we really appreciate the service that they've done for our institution over time. Would you give all of our student athletes a round of applause? <laughs> Today is special on our campus because we're hosting SOAR for a couple of hundred incoming fall 24 students over on the other side of campus, but it's also important and special in athletics because we're celebrating a homecoming per se for a, a very special individual. As a part of that, this individual came by my office about two years ago, roughly. He said, I want to talk to you. And I said, okay, what's going on? Something wrong? He said, no. He said, I'm thinking about leaving. And I said, okay, well, tell, me, tell me what your thoughts are. So he kind of went through some of his thoughts a little bit and told me that he was going to go take an another, another associate head coach position. And he looked at me and I said, you're crazy. And he, he kind of was taken aback for a minute, literally. His eyes got real big, and, and he said, how come? And I said, I think you're selling yourself short. If you're going to leave, you need to go, and you need to be a head coach somewhere. True story. True story. Well, he didn't take my advice. He left to become another associate head coach somewhere. But two years later, when we started interviewing for replacement for Coach Spradlin, would you give a round of applause for Preston as well? <laughs> M Misty's here to take all the credit for him, so <laughs> Misty, thank you. Uh, we started talking about who we want to replace a great coach with, another great coach. And applications and interest were flying in. Kelly Wells' cell phone was jingling. My email and cell phones were jingling, and literally, this was a sought-after position. They were coming in day, coming in at night, so we had a lot of good individuals to select from, and we took it very seriously. We went through a process, and as a part of that process, the individual that sat in my office about two years ago kind of just shot straight to the top. And I think through the series of interviews and vetting process that we do for a lot of positions here on campus, this individual shined. And I think he's going to get his dream because he sold himself short two years ago by going to be another associate head coach. He's finally going to be where he needs to be, and that's back home. And we're pleased to announce as our 15th head coach the individual that sat in my office two years ago. I'm going to let our athletic director, who did the big heavy lifting as a part of this process, to come up and do all the introductions of this 15th head coach that sat in my office. But would you also give a round of applause for our athletic director, Kelly Wells.
Well, I had a, a bunch of notes up here that I kind of wanted to go through and, you know, just being able to look out in this audience and, and kind of see the support and people that are pouring in uh, from our community uh, for this university uh, really wants me to take it a little bit off script. So I want to first say thank you uh, for being here. One of my ultimate goals was to bring our family back together. It's great to see our family coming together. Uh, excuse me. This means a lot. This place means a lot. I'm thankful for all of you. Today is going to be a great honor to bring Johnny Maddox as our 15th head men's basketball coach to Morehead State University, but I'll give you some background. Uh, as we went through the process, uh, Doc Morgan's right. We, we had a lot of interest. We had a lot of phone calls. We had a lot of people interested in taking this position, and I don't want to miss an opportunity to thank Preston Spradling and Misty. Uh, this is a good position, a great position, because of the work that they've done. So let's give them a big hand. As a coach, I can appreciate what Johnny Maddox is about. Started as a student manager, graduate manager, uh, moving into an assistant role, into associate head coaching role, uh, changing institutions to try to get that next best opportunity. And as Doc Morgan said, we, we found his best next opportunity, and that's here at Morehead State. So uh, it gives me great honor uh, to welcome Johnny Maddox as our next head men's basketball coach for the only the 15th time in school history. Uh, Johnny, if you would come up and I'll introduce your family as well. Let's welcome Johnny to the podium. <laughs> but let's welcome Johnny's family as well, his wife, Katie. Let's give Katie a big round of applause. His children, Jonah and Kylie. His mother, Brenda. We're going to make you stand, Brenda. And his sister, Justine. Justine, go ahead. Stand up. You've been wrangling those kids. You deserve it. All right, we're going to do a little presentation here with, with Johnny, and we'll let him take over. It's certainly a great day to be an Eagle. I appreciate all y'all being here. Appreciate those watching online. I can't tell you how pleased and honored and excited I am to be back and be the head coach at Moorhead State University. My family and I are thrilled to be back and the overwhelming support from everyone in the community, on campus, alumni, and former players is both humbling and appreciated. I want to start by thanking our president, Dr. Jay Morgan. I remember that talk we had. And in life, you need those talks. You need uncomfortable conversations. And I never forgot that. When Dr. Morgan and I talked probably two or three days ago, we talked about that talk. So I appreciate that, Dr. Morgan. And certainly want to thank our athletic director, Kelly Wells, for entrusting me with this position. It's certainly an honor and a privilege for me. I'd also like to thank every member of the search committee, which was led by Kelly Wells, Kenna Gaucher, Rhonda Ferguson, Richard Fletcher, Paul Rhodes, and Jamie Carver for running a thorough but timely search, which is really important in today's world with the transfer portal. I also want to extend a big thank you to the Board of Regents. Gratitude will, will be one of our core values here in our program. We will be thankful in all circumstances, and I certainly have a lot of people to give thanks to today. A coach is only as good as his wife, and I'm lucky to have a great one. Katie, thank you for your love, your support, your sacrifice over the years. What you do for our children, our family is not easy, but you do it with a loving heart. 
thank you for your support for me in my career since day one. Jonah, thank you for your boundless energy. <laughs> I hope our teams can play with that same energy. <laughs> and Kylie, just thank you for brightening our day every day. Mom, thank you for it all, for how you raised me, for never giving me a piece of bad advice, for your support in so many ways over the years. And, and my mom, a couple quick stories about her. She's a big Eagles supporter. So I was gone, obviously, the 2023 NIT run. And I talked to my mom every day, multiple times a day. She's never given me a piece of bad advice whether I wanted to hear it or not. And we're on the phone one day. Our season's done. I'm out recruiting. We talk. She says, hey, son, you think you can get me tickets to the uh, Moorhead Clemson NIT game? I said, um, yeah, I think I know somebody that can get you some tickets. So, so she went to that game and, and enjoyed seeing everybody and had a great time. And then, and then recently, we were on the phone a couple days after this job opened. We're on FaceTime so she could see the kids. And she's on the phone, and I'm looking at her, and she's wearing a Moorhead State shirt. <laughs> I, I kid y'all not. I kid y'all not, and, and not much had materialized at that point in time. And I showed Katie, I said, she's wearing a Moorhead State shirt, so I, I figured that was a good sign. So, Mom, thank you for everything. <laughs> Justine, thank you for always keeping it real with me. Listen, there is not a person in this audience, when we play bad, that's going to give it to me more real than my sister. <laughs> He's just going to say, hey, brother, y'all were terrible last night. Can you please get it together? So, Justine, I appreciate your honesty. And finally, this is a, a big one for me. My dad isn't, isn't here today. I uh, lost him four years ago, and I really appreciate all of you that, that were there for me during that time. Uh, he taught me the game of basketball, taught me how to play the right way, but he, he, he taught me there's more to life than basketball. So, Dad, thank you. I hope we can honor you. I hope I can honor you by instilling that principle in our players. I also want to give thanks to so many coaches that have helped me through my life and through my career. Uh, my middle school coach, Britt Beaver, my high school coach, Brian Dickens, my college coaches, Jason Taylor and TJ Rosine, and then the coaches I've worked for, Sean Woods, for taking a chance on me as a graduate assistant when I was just trying to get my foot in the door at the Division I level, and then Preston Spradlin for so much. She's been very influential for me in my career. Uh, Misty, appreciate you being here today. Uh, but Preston, behind the scenes, when, when my GA was done, he really took it on himself to, to help create the full-time director of basketball operations position. Uh, he hired me and gave me my first assistant coaching position at the Division I level and ultimately named me associate head coach. So he was really influential on me uh, becoming and preparing to be a head coach. So Preston, I appreciate you. And then Steve Prohm for fine-tuning me the last two years. To our great fan base, Y'all have truly exemplified the statement, once an eagle, always an eagle. So much so that I even had some of y'all rooting for another MSU across the state. <laughs> Look, don't worry, don't, don't get nervous. I won't call y'all out today, but I got text messages to prove it. <laughs> but here's what really impressed me was watching y'all this March in Evansville at the OVC tournament, in Omaha at the NCAA tournament. I had the opportunity to watch from afar how y'all came out in droves, the passion. And then Scott, like Dr. Morgan mentioned, the blue, the blue hair, that really fired me up. <laughs> and this is no disrespect to any other program, any other fan base, but we've got to continue to make Evansville Eaglesville. One week every March, we got to make Evansville Eaglesville. <laughs> our mission, our mission is to enhance the lives of our student athletes academically, athletically, socially, and personally. We will teach these young men the game of life through the game of basketball. We will encourage them to be the best possible versions of themselves, and we will build men, fathers, husbands, and leaders. Our program is gonna be based on our core values. I mentioned one, gratitude, the others being discipline, doing what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, how you're supposed to do it, and doing it that way every time, even when it's inconvenient or uncomfortable. Discipline is simply making good choices and decisions, both on the court and off the court. Toughness, being able to withstand and overcome adversity. And cohesiveness, having a unified front where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. We're gonna say one plus one equals three. 
which simply means we can accomplish more together than we can apart. We will have the most disciplined, toughest, most cohesive team in the Ohio Valley Conference and be grateful in all circumstances. The results, the wins, the championships will come as a byproduct of these core values. I realize the expectations of this program have never been higher. We will embrace these expectations head on with a process-like approach. I'm not going to tell you what we're going to do, but rather how we're going to do it. And I've come across a poem that best summarizes this approach. It's the Stonecutter's Creed. When nothing seems to help, I go and look at a stonecutter, hammering away at his rock. Perhaps as many as a hundred times without a crack, but on the hundred first blow it splits in two. And I know it wasn't that blow that did it, but all those that came before it. That's going to be our approach. We are going to pound the rock in everything we do, from how we sleep to how we have breakfast, how we get up in the morning, how we eat, how we go to class, how we go to study hall, how we practice, watch film, play the games, and how we act and interact both in the community and on campus. We will have a process-oriented approach where we chip away to accomplish success. There will be highs, there will be lows, but we will never deviate from the process. Again, I can't emphasize enough how excited I am to be your next men's basketball coach. To our administration, once again, I say thank you. To our supporters and fan base, I say let's go. To our current players and recruits, I say it's time to go to work. Thank you and go Eagles. Thank you so much, Coach. Uh, we're going to have a little time for some questions here. We'll first start with our uh, media members. So if you, I'm in the back here. We do have a wireless mic. I'll hand that around for uh, questions. Brian Milam, WKYT in Lexington. Yeah. How long did it take you to think about this job over the last two years if it came open how quickly were you going to be that first name in the hat if that opportunity came yeah not long it's something I always thought about um, something I always dreamed of you know but there's a process to those things uh, I knew how much Preston loved Moorhead and Moorhead loved Preston so um, you know I certainly didn't want to get in the way of that but if the opportunity ever came available um, I, I certainly wanted to be in the mix and thankfully I was Hey, Johnny. David Patrick, Morehead State Athletics. I ask you this morning if this is something that you, you saw yourself doing when you, when you were here. Talk about how good it feels to, to be back at a place that you love, uh, because I know this is very special to your heart and as, as well as your family. But how good does it feel to start your head coaching career at Morehead State? Yeah, it feels great, you know. And, and really it's the people, whether that's our administration in athletics, whether that's our administration on campus, people on campus, people in the community, that's what, what makes this place special. Hey, Coach Kinsey with WLEX in Lexington. You know what it's been like to lead this program to success before. Do you feel like it'll be easier or harder to try to make that transition to keep this momentum going with what this program has seen the last few years? Yeah, I think it's always harder. Um, especially the success we've had the past four years, there's a target on our back, you know, and, 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 and we can't be the hunted. We still got to go hunt. Uh, it, it's, certain, it's like climbing a mountain, you know. Very few people get to the top. Those that get to the top seldom stay at the top. So you got to keep climbing. So we got to keep working daily. Hi, Coach. Colby Wilson, Fox 56. I mean, you've been a student manager and just kind of worked your way up. How has it been just to kind of look back on your process and see all your hard work pay off? Yeah, it, it's certainly gratifying. You know, you just want to, as a coach, you get into the business, you know, because you love impacting young men. You never really know when you're going to get your opportunity to be a head coach. You just want to work as hard as you can, uh, become the best coach you can, but really become the best mentor you can. That's probably what it's more about. And I'm fortunate to be sitting where I am today. 
Jared Stacy with MSU and WIVY. First off, welcome back, Coach. Thanks. Happy to have you back. Talk a little bit about your scheduling. Obviously, the conference schedule, you don't get to really control a lot. But talk a little bit about your non-conference schedule and how you'll approach that, um, not just this season, but every season leading up to conference play. Yeah. Um, the non-conference is designed to prepare you for conference play and prepare you for the conference tournament. So there certainly has to be a balance of like level opponents and uh, power five opponents. And we're gonna bounce that out as best as we can to prepare us for playing the OVC. Jonathan, Chuck Moraz, Eagle Sports Network. Let me ask you about this. You work with Preston for a number of years. Uh, I know that you were in lockstep with him on a number of things. Yep. How will things be similar to what you did with Preston before, but how might they be different with you now in charge of the program? Yeah, I think we have different personalities. We're different people. I'm certainly not going to try to be him, nor should I be. I'm just going to try to be the best Jonathan Maddox I can be. Uh, but there are a lot of good things he did. There are a lot of good things I took from him. I think the defensive identity, the, the rebounding piece, that certainly has to stay in place. Offensively, we'll figure it out based on personnel. You know, we got a roster to fill right now, so the offensive piece will come in later, but we certainly want to be great on the defensive end and on the glass. Um, hey, Coach, you know, you lost a couple key pieces from this last season, but uh, or at least this team has. How do you yeah. feel about the current roster and what you have to work with? I feel really good. Uh, there's six young men in that locker room that have been in the program that understand what it takes practice daily basis that we're on a championship team. One of the things I shared with, with the committee and with some other people, my first year at Moorhead, or at Murray, excuse me, we had one returner from the previous year's roster. So when you have five or six guys, I feel pretty good and, and I want to build around them. You know, I saw this yesterday, I think. Some, sometimes the best players you get in the portal are the ones you already have, meaning a couple years ago when some guys left this program, this program didn't get Drew Thelwell from the portal right but he ended up being a really good player for the next three uh two years because he was retained we want to retain as much as possible obviously we have to recruit and build around that but i certainly feel good about the young men in the program right now hello coach welcome back to more hits day yep thank you uh with the uh, rabid fan bases here in the state of kentucky for mm -hmm. basketball all the way from middle school to high school to college level what makes this fan base so rabid here in the state of, of Kentucky? A, l a love for basketball and a knowledge for basketball, um, you know, across the state, really. But it's, it's fun. I uh, played in a lot of arenas in the state, obviously been at two institutions in the state, and just a genuine love and care for the game of basketball. That makes it fun. Yeah, a lot of it is just getting out and about, re-engaging with the community, getting to schools, getting to the Rotary Club, just, just re-engaging and reconnecting uh, with a lot of people that I already know, but just getting out more and showing my face. Anybody else media-wise? Drew Thelwell said he had one question to end. All right, come on over, Drew. He's got to ask it. This will be our final question here. Um, I just want to say for everyone here, this guy's a really, he's a really good guy. He's coached me for two years and I really appreciate him. Um, we've had some deep conversations, but I wanted to ask you for someone as an incoming freshman or an incoming transfer, yep. what, what, what's going to be like your relationship with them? Cause obviously you and I have a great relationship and that means a lot in basketball nowadays. So can you speak on that? Yeah. These young men, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So the first step is connecting with them, building a relationship with them, spending time with them, investing in them. And then on the court, it, it, if you don't have that background where you've built a relationship with them, it's hard to hold them accountable once they get to the court. But if you can connect with them first, now we can hold you accountable on the court. So That'll do it for the press conference portion. Thank you so much, Coach. Welcome back. Thank you to everyone here. Please stick around. We'll have our meet and greet uh, right now. Thank you. Yeah, thanks.